Nowadays, almost everyone has huge amounts of data that they are afraid of losing, just like I am. Imagine all of your travel videos with your family and your friends would be lost and gone forever. Me personally, I'd be so unhappy and I don't know what I'd be doing. And this is why I'm making this video, where I'll be explaining how you can get cheap hard drives, encrypt all your data so that your privacy is safe from others, as well as backup all your data in case someone steals your data, it gets corrupt or broken or something else happens to it. This way you'll still have a copy of all your files. Let's get started. Now that we've cleaned everything up, let's talk about different types of storage. We have SSDs on one side and HDDs on the other side. With SSDs being a lot more expensive, but at the same time being a lot faster than HDDs. But since these are offering a lot more disk space for smaller prices, we'll be only focusing on regular HDDs in this video. One thing I have to say though is that if you drop this drive, then you'll probably lose your data. While dropping an SSD is not such a huge problem because it does not have any mechanical parts inside of it which are moving. If you're traveling around and you're afraid that you might drop one of these, then you should probably go with an SSD. But since we're talking about long-term storage and backing up all of your data, we'll be focusing on HDDs. Now let's talk about how you can get these sorts of drives for very cheap prices. If you look at this 14 terabyte hard drive by Western Digital, you'll be paying around 500 euros for this if you buy it regularly. But if you do it like me and buy an external hard drive, then you'll only be paying 300 euros. Or in my case, it was on sale and I only paid 250 euros, which is half the price. And it's pretty insane, isn't it? Since these are almost the same drives as the expensive ones. And I've been testing around and many other users on the internet have as well. And there's basically no difference except for these are so-called white label drives because they only have a white label. They don't have a signature. They don't have a name like, for example, Iron Wolf Pro or Western Digital Red or Seagate Barracuda or whatever. So the best thing you can do to save money is buy an external hard drive. And in my case, I took this hard drive out of its external enclosure so that I can use it in my PC, in my NAS, or even with an adapter like this one right here, where I can easily put the hard drive inside. Let me show you. And then I take this one and I can easily connect them to my PC or laptop and transfer all the data without any problems. And since these drives sit at home most of the time, I'm fine that they don't have an external enclosure. This is a lot faster because I don't have to use any USB cable and it works perfectly. If you want to do it like me and you want to take your hard drive out of your external enclosure, then you'll have to do something called shucking. And there are many, many videos for different types of external hard drive enclosures, which you'll find on YouTube or anywhere else on the internet. That's why I'll be not showing you today how to do it. But if you want to do it, you have the option. One thing that you have to remember though, is that if you take these out of their external enclosures, you might lose your warranty. But if you're careful and don't break anything and your hard drive has a failure and you want to send it back, you should not throw that enclosure away. Put it back inside, if you know what I mean, and everything will be fine. But at the same time, I've heard that many companies like Seagate and Western Digital, they don't have any problems if you take these drives out and even send them in like this they'll take care of it. There's one other thing that I want to warn you about because I've read it a lot on the internet. It did not happen to me before, but if you happen to buy one of these drives from Western Digital, the MyBook external drive, then you might want to take it out of the external enclosure because it has a chip which is encrypting all the data and if this chip fails then all your data will be encrypted and you'll have no chance to get this data and this is why you should be taking these drives out instead and use something like bitlocker or veracrypt instead and this is actually what we'll be doing next i'll get my laptop and then i'll show you how you can get bitlocker working on one of these drives as well as transfer all of your data from one hard drive to another so that you always have a backup of all your data. And there's a sweet software called Free File Sync, which also helps you if you have small changes that you made and you don't wanna copy all the files at once, but only copy the files that have changed, then you'll find this workflow to be very, very helpful. But before we go on, let's first count the storage we have here. And let me tell you why this is important. Is it two terabyte SSD, two terabyte hard drive, 
four terabytes, so eight terabytes in total. Another four terabytes, twelve terabytes in total. I think this is half a terabyte, so twelve and a half terabytes. This is another four terabytes, so sixteen and a half terabytes, two terabytes, so eighteen and a half terabytes, and this is another two terabytes, so twenty and a half terabytes. This is a half terabyte HDD, so twenty one terabytes, and these are two ten terabytes, so in total we have forty one terabytes, and another fourteen terabytes, and I also have another fourteen terabytes inside of here, which I have not unboxed yet. So that would make it twenty eight, forty eight plus twenty one, which is so many numbers. Okay, the thing I wanted to talk to you about is that even if this seems to be a lot of storage, you still have to take care of your backup. If you have a 10 terabyte hard drive, you have to have a 10 terabyte backup drive as well so that you can make an exact copy of all your files, which basically divides all your storage into half. And this is something that many people forget about. And this is something that you can work around with different types of RAID systems. But this is something that I'll be not talking about in this video because it's quite complicated if you're a newcomer and the methods we'll be using will be working just fine with the types of drives we have here. But now let's get started with encryption and backing up all your data. Okay, here we are. Depending on whether your data needs to be very safe or you have some sort of paranoia, you might want to adjust your encryption method. Press Windows type gpedit.msc, enter, then look for administrative templates, Windows components, and BitLocker drive encryption. And here you can see choose drive encryption method and cipher strength. You'll want to click enable right here if it's not configured and choose the encryption method as AES 256 bit. And this policy setting is only applied when you turn BitLocker on. Thing is though, that changing the encryption method has no effect if the drive is already encrypted or if encryption is in progress. So you definitely want to do that first before you encrypt your drive. Then you'll have to look for the other settings because there is more than one and also adjust them. Click enabled, then choose 256 bits, apply, okay, and do the same for this one just to make sure that BitLocker is definitely enabling 256-bit encryption for all your drives. Okay, then close this. And next we'll be encrypting one of my new drives. As you can see, this is a totally new drive. I have not saved anything so far in this drive. And the encryption method you'll be choosing in the following really depends on what kind of drive you want to encrypt. If you already have data on your drive, you might want to choose something else. As you can see, this drive is not encrypted so far, and that's what we'll be doing now. Right click on your drive, turn on BitLocker. Next, choose a password to unlock your drive. This password should be really strong and ideally you would save this in your password manager, but just for testing purposes, I'll choose a small one right here, then click next. And here you'll want to back up your recovery key in case you lose your password or something else happens. You can either save it to your Microsoft account, save it to a file or print it out on a paper. I'll be saving it to a file to my desktop now and then you can click next. So now you'll have to choose an option and this depends on whether your hard drive is a new one or you already have data on your hard drive. If it's a new one, then you should encrypt only used disk space, which means that it will encrypt all the data that you copy on your hard drive while encrypting the entire drive will encrypt all the data, even the data that has been deleted. Because you should always remember, if you just delete something from your drive, it is not deleted entirely. You'll have to format it. And as soon as some new data overrides existing deleted data, only then you'll have absolute security. Because even if you delete data from your hard drive, this data is still there and it will take some time before you override it with new data. So if you are going to encrypt an existing drive, you would better be choosing this option right here. But for now, I'll choose encrypt use disk space only as this is a new drive. Click next and then you can start encryption. So as you can see, this is really fast because this is a new drive and there is no data on it so far. And now it's already completed. All the data that you'll be copying on this drive will be encrypted automatically and you don't have to worry about it. Next, let's check whether our drive is encrypted properly or not. Press your Windows key, type CMD, right click, run as administrator, press yes, and then type manage-bde-status. And now, as you can see, it gives you a whole bunch of drives and shows you whether your drive is encrypted and which encryption method has been used. 
And as you can see, volume N, for example, is encrypted 100% with this encryption method right here and the same for this volume right here. This is especially useful if you want to check whether the encryption method you have chosen before is working properly or not. Okay, so now you can close that window and we'll be talking about free file sync and how you can use that to transfer all your data from one hard drive to another. As you can see, I have one hard drive right here, which is called Skyblock, and I have another one which is called Skyblock Backup. And I want to backup all the data or at least some of the data from this hard drive to this hard drive. So normally you'd be going right here, right click, copy and paste it here. But this is not the ideal solution because you'll have to worry about files getting overwritten and you might run into some other problems. And that's why you should be using Free File Sync. Oh, and by the way, I'll leave a download link for Free File Sync in the description below. So first you'll have to choose the drive that you want to copy from. I'll choose Skyblock, click on Business, choose this folder. Next, I'll be choosing the folder that I want to copy to which is Skyblock Backup, Business. Now we can compare both folders. And as you can see, this takes a moment. And now we have a list of all the files that are existing on this drive, but not on this one. Next thing to do is choose your synchronization settings. In this window, you can either choose two-way, mirror, update, or custom. I choose custom, but I'll explain what that means in a second. First, I'd suggest ticking this box because it will create a database of all your files and detect moved files, which is really helpful. Next, let's go through all these categories. As you can see, if an item exists on the left side only, it will copy the new item to the right. If the left side is newer, it will update the right item. If we have a conflict, then it will leave it as an unresolved conflict for you to choose. If the right side is newer, nothing will happen. This way, you can also confirm whether a change is wanted or not. And the last thing is, the item exists on the right side only. In this case, you'll want to delete the right side item. But of course, you can just edit this and choose whatever you want but these are the settings that I would recommend. By the way, you can also use the filter and exclude different types of files and folders from this. So for example, the recycle bin will not be copied from this side to this side, which is a good thing. Press OK, and now we can synchronize. As you can see, there's 185 files and folders that will be created and copied to the right side. There's three files that will be updated and two files that will be deleted because they're no longer on the left side. Press start. And now it's synchronizing. If this takes a long time, you can choose whether you want to exit set your computer in a sleep mode or shut down. But as you can see, this worked quite fast since it wasn't that much data. Now you can close, exit, and now both your drives should be perfectly synced. Yeah, and that's basically it. There's not much more to it. I mean, you could be encrypting these drives as well. I haven't done that so far, but you should really do that to make sure that if someone steals your drives, or something else happens to it, no one can reach your data, especially if it's business data, like in my case, you don't want anyone else to access these files. And the good thing about this is that even if someone steals your hard drive, they'll not be able to access your data. The encryption method that we've chosen before is one of the best encryption methods right now, and it will be taking quite a few years to encrypt this data. You're definitely on the safe side now. But you should be staying updated since no algorithm can be absolutely 100% safe. So if there's something new or some new attacks are possible, then you'd want to use a new encryption method. But that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. And if you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments below. Other than that, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you're interested in new videos like these. And yeah, that's it. See you next time.